afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching uh, this video. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So this is me again, Jamie Naftali on the Pediatric World. This is the only channel that is all about the kids' welfare. Um, uh, we give the people knowledge, especially the mothers, the caregivers, on uh, the common illnesses affecting children while growing up. Those issues that babies have. So uh, stay tuned. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit that red button, the subscribe button, so that you become part of this wonderful family. If you are that returning subscriber, thank you so much. Uh, keep uh, watching. So without wasting time, let's go to the video. So in today's video, today's episode, we are continuing on HIV in children. So, so far we have done two episodes. So if you haven't watched, kindly, kindly go back to the previous videos and watch. It's an interesting topic and we said at the same time uh, it has got uh, some fears. I don't know, people fear it. So let's try to understand what really happens. So today we are doing uh, the HIV and PITC. PITC, what is this? This is the testing and uh, counseling. So when we are starting to say this child has got HIV, we start by testing first. So PITC in full is uh, provider initiated testing and counseling. Provider initiated testing and counseling. So why are we uh, interested in HIV? Why and when to do the HIV test to a child? So this is it uh, that PITC is all about. So having, um, having defined the PITC, so let's continue. So I'll start, uh, my opening statement will be that it is a government policy, this PITC, this uh, initiated testing and counseling, it is usually a government policy. Um, and this is uh, that all sick children presenting into facilities or into hospitals uh, with unknown status should be offered HIV testing using PITC. So it is, it is a government policy that any baby walking into a facility, into a hospital, and um, we, have, we don't have the, the, the status of this child is not known, uh, it, is, it is a policy that these children should be offered HIV testing, and this is by use of this now, the PITC. Hope this is clear. So PITC, this testing and counseling, it is best done on admission. Yes, on admission. We are going to see why. It is best done in admission when other investigations or the tests, the tests are what you are calling investigations, when other tests are being ordered. So then all clinicians, all clinicians should be able to perform the PITC. They should perform, do the testing and counseling to all babies. And they should be able to discuss a HIV positive or a HIV negative uh, test. So they should uh, be able to do all this. They should be able to discuss a, po a HIV positive and a HIV negative result. So this is it. All the healthcare workers, the clinicians, they are supposed to know uh, how to do this. So let's go to quick guide to PITC. What guides us here? So as much as possible, uh, find, as a clinician now in hospital, find a quiet uh, place to discuss the child's uh, admission diagnosis, the test, and also the treatment plan. It should be in a quiet place. You are here with this caregiver, the care provider who has brought this child to hospital. So you need a quiet place. So you discuss all this. Uh, the mother or the caregiver has a right to know what is really happening. They should uh, know, be, you should discuss with these mothers the child's admission, diagnosis, what has made you uh, admit this child, the test and the treatment plan. How or what are you going to treat these babies with? Uh, another uh, PITC guideline is that after careful history taking and examination, this is again to ask the clinicians, as the uh, professional caregivers. So after taking a careful history 
and also examination. Remember we said in all illnesses, when a child comes to hospital, we should take a detailed, a detailed history from the mother. This is, we ask questions on uh, the circumstances under which uh, these babies got sick. So we want to really know, to know, we dig deep into this question. This is what we call history taking. So we should be careful with history and examination. After taking history, you go again and examine this baby. Yes, then plan all the investigations, what we are calling the test, and inform uh, the caretaker what tests are needed. So you should explain to this caretaker, the caregiver of this child, you should explain to them all and everything that you're doing right from admission. So hope so far we are together. Um, uh, again, explain the government guidance, explain to them the government guidance that all sick children with a known HIV status, that they should be tested, they should know their status, they should have a HIV test, and, and so that their child cannot be left out. Explain to them it's a government policy that if uh, uh, any child walking into hospital with an unknown status should be tested. So I hope this is clear. Uh, the reasons why we are doing this, the reason why we are doing this, uh, so that uh, you are able to explain to them that when they come to hospital, they want to know the problem that the child has and to find the best treatment to it. So you are explaining, going ahead and explaining to them why you want to do uh, this HIV test. You just don't go and do the test. So you are explaining to them because they really want to know, uh, to know what the problem was and find the best uh, treatment for it. Also, knowing the HIV test results, it gives, uh, it gives the, the, the doctors the best understanding of the illness and how to treat it. So when we do the HIV uh, status, when you, are, you have the HIV status of the child in mind, when seeing this child, you are able to know, you are able to understand better the illness and how to go about it when it comes to treatment. Also, the treatment that is given to the child will change if the child has got HIV. Explain to them that if this child came to hospital because of malaria, and on top we find that the HIV status is positive, so the treatment is definitely going to change. So explain to them why the really the, the need as to why we really want to know the HIV status of this child. So because the, we are saying the treatment is definitely going to change. Uh, also, if the child has got HIV, he or she will need an additional treatment and for a longer time and the earlier this is started the better so the treatment again is going not going to be like for any other illness when we know the child's status we are going to treat it for a longer time and the earlier this treatment is, tre uh, is started the better so try explaining all this to the caregivers to the mothers or to the parent who has brought this child so that they are able to understand what you are doing Another thing is that um, the HIV test will be done uh, with the approval uh, and not with secret. So this caregiver should give an approval that the HIV uh, test is, is going to be done to their child. It is they have the right to approve it. It is not done uh, secretly. So as we say that any illness to a child or to any patient, is private and confidential so we need consent we need consent here from the caregiver or from the part from the parents so this is what we mean by that uh, they should uh, when the HIV test is being done we need an approval from this parent or whoever is taking care of this child explain that the result will be given to them and that telling other family and friends is their own decision what I just said about uh, the information being private and confidential. So if they feel the need to tell other family members or the friends, it's upon them. It's a decision and not a decision new as professional caregiver. So us is to stay with the information and give to the right person, to this parent only. If they decide to do and go ahead and give the other uh, friends the information, as we know that the information is very very private and confidential so that is very very important uh, again uh, explain to them that the result will be known only by the doctors or the nurses taking care of this child 
because they need this knowledge to, uh, to provide the most appropriate care. So the nurse or the doctors, definitely they'll have to get to know, just uh, ensure, uh, assure them that it is only you people because we need the information. It's very important to us, like we are saying, when it comes to treatment, the treatment is going to change and all that, giving treatment for longer. So whoever, either the nurse or the doctors, they really need to know, explain to them the reason why they should know and all that. Uh, give the parent or the guardian the opportunity to ask questions. Very, very important. You just, the, the, the child doesn't just come, you just do the HIV test without getting consent from the parent and you just leave it at there. You tell them this child is HIV positive or HIV negative. No, this is wrong. So give this caregiver, give this guardian the opportunity to ask questions. You should be have a listening ear to all this. I think this part is more about us as the professional caregivers when it comes to HIV. So please remember that. Give them time. Give, the, give them time to ask questions and you also, you are able to answer them so that they feel contented. So finally, the person asking for, for the permission for the HIV testing should then write in the medical record that the the the, uh, the permission was uh, granted or it was given so after doing all this it is important to write in a medical uh, record put in a medical record that this baby was done a hiv test and the permission was granted by whoever the guardian was or the parent it is very very important for us you should document it is documented there very very important so my people, this is very important and when it comes to HIV, we say it again, it is a very, very sensitive, somehow sensitive and causes some fear. So this is what, before you even go on and treating, we should know all these things because we are saying we are starting with testing and counseling. It is a very, very important part when it comes uh, to HIV. We just don't do the test and we continue or start medications. There is a lot that is involved. And this is what the PITC is all about. The provider initiated testing and counseling. And we are saying it is even approved. It is by the government. It is a government policy that all this uh, should happen. So this is it. Uh, we are continuing on well. Thank you. This is it about this episode. At least now you have the knowledge on what happens, what to start and where to start when you're doing the HIV testing. Thank you for staying tuned. Keep subscribing. Those who have not subscribed, kindly uh, subscribe to this channel. Share these videos widely so that many people can reach them. We want at the end to have healthy babies. We also want to improve their qualities of life. Thank you. Till next time. Bye-bye.